some extent, going a little bit of a different direction. The Gospel of John, chapter 10. The words of Christ, I believe, are way more profound than what we've given him credit for. You know, Jesus said, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word, my word, my word shall never pass away. And unless the Holy Spirit quickens to our heart, and matter of fact, he said, when the Holy Spirit comes, he will bring back to your remembrance all those things which I taught. That's the foundation that we build our life on. It gives us spiritual insight. Christ brought such deep, profound revelation that really could not be understood until after you were born again and the Holy Spirit would reveal his true meaning to you. But in chapter 10, verse 1, he begins to say some very profound things. He says, verily, verily, and every time he uses that terminology, he means this is super serious. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. The name of my message tonight, I don't know if it's appropriate, it's called The King and the Shyster. The King and the Shyster. See, the devil is the shyster. He's a liar, he's a thief, he's a murderer, he's a deceiver. Matter of fact, in John 8, 44, when he was proclaiming the gospel to, the, uh, to those who were there, he said, you are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and he abode not in the truth because there's no truth in him. When he telleth a lie, he telleth it of himself because he's a liar. Say, the devil is a liar. Now, you need to really get that in your heart. The devil is a liar. I said, the devil is a liar, and he's the father of it. Liar, liar, pants on fire. <laughs> He's a liar. Everything the devil says is a lie. There is no truth in him. How did man lose all that he had? See, man lost more than just the Garden of Eden. Man, man lost his relationship with God. Man lost his walk with God. Man lost his intimacy God, with God. Man lost his holiness with God, his righteousness with God, his obedience to God. His, he, lost it. he lost the image of God. He lost it. He lost his authority and power. If you look in chapter 10 and verse 10, the thief cometh not, the shyster, the liar, the murderer, what, what, he was a murderer from the beginning. What did he want to murder? The truth. He wanted to kill the truth because you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. Free from what? The lies. I know this is hard to believe, but everything that is against this book, contrary to the divine nature of God, is a lie. It's all a lie. It's, the, it's the, just nothing but smoke and mirrors. Now, don't misunderstand me. I'm not denying the reality of the problems, but I'm telling you that we have the right to, 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 to not allow them in our lives. See, the thief's going to come. He's going to try to invade your heart, your mind, your life. Why? He's coming to, why? He's going to try to steal your joy, your peace, your love, your commitment, your faithfulness. We see it happening all across America and around the world right there. It says the love of many shall wax cold because iniquity shall abound. Because of iniquity, because love is being stoled. Love for who? Love for God. That's the first commandment. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, soul, mind, strength, and being. We were made for his pleasure. He robbed us. He stole us away from God. He's a thief. He's a liar. He said the thief comes not but for to steal to kill and to destroy. You might say that when Adam, and actually if you went back and you take a look in Genesis 3 and 7, when they ate of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, it says their eyes were opened and the very first thing they saw was the flesh. They said, hey, we're naked. Pastor Mike, weren't they naked before? I don't believe they were naked. 
I believe they look just like God. God is light. I believe that there was a Shekinah glory upon them. I really do. I believe that the glory of God, you know how animals, the animals of this world, like you look at the animals and the fur they have or the feathers they have. They're clothed. They're, they're created clothed. I believe that man was clothed in the glory of God. I really do. And when man committed sin, the glory of God was gone. He robbed the glory of God from them. He robbed. See, he wanted dominion. He wanted power. The devil wanted authority, and he robbed the authority of man. And how did he do it? By getting man to believe a lie. He got him to believe a lie. And if you believe, see, whatever you believe, you become a slave of. As a man thinketh, so is he. So if you believe a lie, you say, but Pastor Mike, the, the lie is so real. See, what happened when man believed the lie and Paul said to the early church, he said, I am afraid, lest by any means as a serpent beguiled Eve through his subtility, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity of Christ. And then he goes on and he says about preachers coming in, in preaching another gospel. He said, didn't you gladly receive them? They're deceiving you. They're lying to you. Their father is the father of lies. And so it's a lie, or let's say what it is, it's unbelief. It's the seed of the serpent, the seed of the snake, the seed of the shyster, the seed of the liar, the seed of unbelief. Doubting what God's word says, not believing what God says. And yet it says God is not a man that he should lie nor the Son of Man, that he should repent. Has he said it? Shall he not do it? Has he spoken it? Will he not make it good? God cannot lie. It's impossible for him to lie. And so it's the seed of unbelief that was sown into the heart of man and to the flesh of man that brought all the misery, all the pain, all the sorrow, all the death, all the famine, all the heartache, and immediately the devil began to take the authority that God had, that, that God had given to man because he gave to man. He told man, you subdue and have dominion, but because of a lie, man gave that authority to the devil, and now the Bible literally says that Satan is the God of this age in whom the God of this world has blinded the eyes and minds of the... See, he wanted to be God, not because he wanted to kill God, which was just absolutely insane, because if he could have succeeded in killing God, then all that was in existence would have ceased to be in existence, because he upholds all things with the word of his power. Without God, nothing exists. <laughs> you know what I mean? So if he could have destroyed God, he'd have been gone too. But God is indestructible, praise the Lord. As a matter of fact, God cannot lie. And God cannot be tempted to do evil. And God is pure light, and in him there is no darkness. And he's the father of lights. Whew, man, I'm glad. God is love. God is holy. God is peace. God is joy. God is, God is, God is righteous. God is, God is Terrible in majesty. I mean, there's a lot of things that God is if you study the Bible. God is a mighty man of war. Hallelujah. God is the prince of peace. But the thief comes and he wants to steal from us the reality of Christ in order to kill us and murder us and destroy us. He's driven. The devil is driven. I'm telling you, the devil is absolutely loony. He is insane. All you got to do is see what his children are doing. Look, come on, look what we did when we were children. And actually, unbelief is a spirit. Did you know unbelief is a spirit? Did you know that it says, And you had the quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins, where in time past you walked according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience? And it's unbelief. See, there's only, there's two worlds. There's heaven and hell. There's light and darkness. There's, there's life and there's death. There's two trees in the garden, the tree of, the tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. There's two, there's just two. There's two. There's, there, there's the God of heaven and the God of this world. And, and when you walk in unbelief, that means, see, that, see how the devil does this. He's, he is driven to convince you that God 
is a liar. And he's the liar. Isn't it funny how the people who proclaim the loudest, he's a liar, he's a liar, he's a liar, he's usually the one who's a liar, and God just stands there with his mouth shut. Says, okay, you choose if you want. I mean, God knew what he was telling the, the man and the woman, but he let them make the choice. You got to choose who you're going to believe today. You're going to believe what God says? That's faith. See, faith is the way into the heavens. Faith is the way into all things are possible. Faith, see, Jesus said, I am come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. How does that life come? It only comes through faith in Jesus Christ. He said, I am the, the shepherd of the sheep. He said, I am the doorway into the sheep. He said, I'm the door. Believe in me. I'm totally convinced the broad and wide way, many go in there at, the entrance into the broad and wide way is the doorway of unbelief. And unbelief says, you know what, I know God's word says, but I believe my body. I believe what I see. I believe what I touch. I believe what I taste. I see what I, I believe what I hear. I believe what I smell. I believe what I feel. Faith doesn't do that. See, the just shall live by faith. It says that over and over and over. It says that in Malachi 2, uh, verse 4. It, it says that in Romans 1, 17. It says that in Hebrews 10, 38. It says that in 2 Corinthians 5, 7. It says that in Galatians 3, 11, that we walk by faith. Faith, faith takes us into the kingdom of God. Unbelief takes you into hell, into misery, into sorrow, into pain, into torment, into worry, into fear, into anxiety. So doesn't it just make sense that we would rise up because the seed of the woman will crush the head of the serpent or the seed of the serpent? That is the seed of unbelief. That's the unbelief. That he said to the woman, oh, you'll not surely die. For God's a liar. You can't believe God. You can't trust God. You can't depend upon God. You can't look to God. Why do you think? Because Jesus was the expression of the Father in the earth. And every time he saw his disciples doubting him or not believing him. I mean, it was, he was highly offended. Not offended in a natural, physical way, but it hurt the one who made, the one who created. He says, have I done so many miracles among you and you yet do not believe? Why don't you believe me? Because it was a seed of unbelief. They had grabbed a hold of their mind. They had yielded their mind. See, they didn't know how to, they lost. See, at one time, because all things were created, we understand by faith. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. We, we, by faith, we understand. See, you look at Hebrews 11, and you see, by faith, by faith. I think it's over 30 sometimes through faith, because of faith. And Jesus taught more about faith than anything else. Who, faith in who? Faith in him. Faith in me. You know, don't be offended. Tell somebody, I would not be offended. It says, you know, it says, uh, great peace have them that love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. It says, cursed is the man whose trust is in the arm of the flesh. You know how many people are looking to the world? I've done it. And we become cursed. We come under the curse because we're not trusting God. Now, you can't just decide, I'm going to trust God. Be because it, 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 it's, it's tr you know, true biblical faith is, it, it, it is not of this world. It's not of this age. Do you, and matter of fact, Jesus said, because see, what the enemy's doing, the, 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 more, the, the more unbelief there is in a society, the greater the wick, wick, wickedness and the atrocities there will be. Why do you think God destroyed Noah's generation? There was no faith left. They didn't believe a word that Noah said. They knew there was a God. At least one time they knew there was a God. They knew about Adam. They knew about what happened. They knew about the history of the human race. They knew that God at one time walked with man. But unbelief stole that knowledge from them. You know, people are becoming stupider. 
They really are. They've taken the word out of schools. They've taken prayer out of schools. They've taken Jesus out of society. And people are becoming more lawless and more ignorant and more arrogant and more proudful and more wicked than ever. And you ain't seen nothing. And the reason why God destroyed Noah's generation, he said there was no faith left. The only one that had faith was Noah and his family. That's the only one. What? There's a flood coming. God said there's a flood coming and it moved with fear to the saving of his house. Faith is dying. Why? Faith comes, actually faith comes 20 ways, but that's 20 different sermons. But the major way that faith comes is by the word of God. He therefore that worketh miracles among you, does he do it by the works of law or by the hearing of faith? Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. This is God. Now, when I say this is God, don't misunderstand. I'm not saying this physical letter is God, but it says in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. Christ comes to bring us life. How is he going to bring us life? By faith in him. He said, I am the door. I am the way. I am the truth. How do you combat the shyster? How do you overcome the liar? By the truth. By believing the truth. Spitting in the devil's face. Just read those in Hebrews 11 who stood up against the lies. They didn't deny. See, David didn't deny there was a Goliath, but he did not say who they said Goliath was. He's a giant. He's a mighty man of war. He never bragged about Goliath. See, what you believe in is what you brag about. It's what you boast about. It's what you exalt. It's what you lift up. Well, if we really believe in Christ, we're going to lift up Christ. Let me tell you what Jesus did for me. Let me tell you how Jesus set me free. Let me tell you the truth that will set you free. It's, it, it's, it's an obsession. Unbelief is a spirit. It's a spirit of disobedience. It's, you don't believe the word. Be not deceived. God's not mocked. Whatever a man sows, he will reap. You sow to the flesh. See, when, the, when our belief begins to overwhelm a human heart, like cancer that eats all the good cells in your body, when our belief begins to overwhelm a heart, you lose the fear of God. You lose the reality of judgment. You lose the reality that the day will come when you'll stand before your maker and give an account of every deed you've done, of every word that you've spoken. The greater the faith in your heart, the greater will be your obedience. Your level of faith is revealed by your obedience. When God said to Abraham, give me your son, he said he obeyed him. And when he saw that, he put his son upon the altar. He says, now I know you love me. He's the father of faith. Faith without works is dead. It's dead faith. Stinks. Doesn't do any good. Doesn't help anybody. But Jesus said the thief's coming, and he comes through unbelief. He wants to rob you from all that God has for you. See, Jesus said, I'm come that you might have life, <laughs> and more abundantly. But it can only be attained through faith in him. You got to believe him. How? Get the word in your heart. Starve your unbelief. Starve the doubts. Starve. Starve it. Just starve it. And start feeding your heart the word of God. And, and you can feed it, first of all, because these men were full of the word of God. They were full of faith. And, and, and there's some preachers who are full of faith today. And you can tell by what they preach and declare, the character, the nature, the will. They tell you, you can take, you can go into the promised land. See, there was 12 leaders that went into Canaan, and they came out, and 10 of them were full of unbelief. And they began to grumble and gripe and complain and said, oh, we can't overcome. They're giants. They're mighty men of war. Their cities are amazing. And Joshua and Caleb stood up by a different spirit, a spirit of faith. See, having the same spirit of faith as it is written, we believe, therefore have we spoken. We also believe and therefore speak. I have a spirit of faith. Either you got a spirit of faith or you got a spirit of unbelief. Which spirit are you operating in? Operating in a spirit. If you're operating in a spirit of faith, you'll talk like Jesus, act like Jesus, walk like Jesus, do the works of Jesus. You'll think like Jesus. You'll be just like Jesus. And the more faith you have, the more you'll be like Jesus. Faith isn't revealed in the size of the car you drive or the rings you wear or the house you live in or your fancy hairdo or the makeup. <laughs> Faith is revealed by the character of Christ, partakers of his divine nature. So the Gospel of John chapter 3, verse 3 says, you must be born again. What? Be born of the Spirit. A Spirit of what? Spirit of faith. 
That's the seed of faith. That's the seed of Christ. Christ in me, the hope of glory. That's, that's what takes you into the heavenlies. Is, that's what brings heaven to earth. Thy will be done on earth as it is. It is a seed of faith. It's faith like the size of a grain of mustard seed. Did you know there's, I, there's 18 levels of faith? 18 levels of faith. Great faith, strong faith, common faith, pure faith, precious faith. That's a whole other message. See, faith is so important, but it's faith in Jesus Christ. Don't put your trust in man. Don't put your trust in the system. Don't put your trust in society. Don't put your trust in your pastor. I don't deserve your quote-unquote trust. Jesus deserves your trust. See, as long as Jesus is upon the throne of your heart, everybody around you can fall to the left and to the right, and it will break your heart, but it won't. It won't shake your faith because your faith is not in men. Your faith is in God. See, God will never leave you nor forsake you. So John 3, 3, he says, you must be born again. You must be born. And notice what he says here. Jump down to verse 5. He says, verily, verily, I send to you, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit. Now, you can look at this in two different ways. Water is symbolic of repentance. Or you could say it this way, of coming into agreement with God or with the washing of the water of the word. You must be born again, and you must be born of the water. That means you come into agreement with God. You're born of the incorruptible seed of the word of life. You're born of faith, because it says, whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. So you must be born of repentance Because now you're in agreement with the word. I agree with you, God. I can't overcome the giants. I can't overcome the flesh. I can't overcome the things of this world. I can bring every thought into obedience. I can subdue. I can have dominion. I can overcome because of the blood of Christ, because of the name. And through thy name, we will drive out the enemy. That name that's above every name, that every tongue must confess and every knee must bow. And declare as Lord. He said, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not the things I say? So there's a, there's a false faith. It's not a real faith. Real faith has fruits. Real faith has evidence. Real faith reveals itself. It says, was not Rahab the harlot justified by faith when she had received the messengers and sent them out another way? For then you see that a man is not, not justified by faith alone, but by works. It's a faith that produces works. It's a works that we do not boast about. Look what I've done. We go, hey, look what God did. Hallelujah. He healed me. He delivered me. He, 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 he put, he, 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 and, and even David, he said, David said, God delivered the lion into my hand. God delivered the bear. He didn't say, I killed the lion. I killed the bear. He said, God did it. God did it. He said, I just ran out and grabbed the, 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 the beard of the lion and, and, and the spirit of God broke his neck. I mean, really. It was brutal in the old covenant. It was bloody. It was nasty. Do you know what it still is today, but it's in the spiritual world? This is serious business. This is serious business. And a lot of people are like the woman with the issue of blood. She spent all that she had and gave it to all the sick and rather got worse. But finally she heard about Jesus. See, I don't know. As long as you got breath in your lungs, you still got hope. Faith can still spring forth up out of the ashes of your ruined life. You know, isn't it funny how most people, it's when they hit the bottom of the barrel when they all finally look up and life comes out of death. Lazarus in the grave for four days, stunk by then. Faith raised him up. Faith will raise you up. Faith will take you into the realm where all things are possible. Oh, let's move on. And of the spirit, of the spirit, See, so it's, 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 it's the spirit of faith. It's, remember in John 6, 63, he said, For my words are spirit, and they are life. He said, The flesh profiteth nothing. It's the spirit that quickeneth. The spirit of faith will take you into the realm where nothing will be impossible if you believe. Now, see, this is the key. If you truly believe the biblical principles that whatsoever you say shall come to pass, You shall have whatever you say. But true faith doesn't say what it wants. True biblical faith, based on the will of the Father, says, Father, not my will, but let your will be done. See, 
there's all this teaching on faith. You can have what you want. They don't understand. True biblical faith comes from the Father's heart, and it's only based on his will. That's why, see, Jesus didn't use faith for selfish reasons. When the devil said to him, now, Jesus, I know you're hungry. You've been without food for 40 days, and if you're the son of God, change these rocks into bread. He could have done it, but it would have been sinful. It would have been a lie. He would, you have the authority to do what you want. No, no. He said, my meat is to do the will of him that sent me. See, faith says, not my will, not my desires, not what I want, but what he wants. That's when you're walking in the spirit. If you walk in the spirit, you'll not fulfill the lust of the flesh, for the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary one to another, so that you cannot do the things that you would for which you're in a standstill. You're lukewarm. You're not making progress. You're not really going backwards, but most people do go backwards eventually. You're not really moving forward. Why? Because you're trying to use the principles of the kingdom for self. That's what the devil was trying to do. The devil said, I will exalt myself. I will put my throne above this. He thought through confession he could get what he wanted. He was trying to use the laws of the kingdom to get what he wanted. People in the church, see, they're listening to the same liar. See, you know, in order to be a really, really good liar, you've got to convince yourself that what you're saying is true. I'm totally convinced the devil has convinced himself. He is so deceived. But that's why it says, but be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. See, my heart's cry needs to be, Father, not my will, not my will. Lord, I want your will to be done. I want, Father, I want people to be set free. I want people to be delivered. I, I, I want, see, and when Jesus came on the scene, he came in such magnificent authority. Just study it. The people were besides themselves. The people were just absolutely, uh, if you read it in Greek, they were like losing it. Who is this man that even the wind and the waves obey him? He, he, he does everything perfectly. He, he, I mean, look at that. He, he, he tells the devils to come out and they come out. He, tell the, he tells the dead to come up out of the grave. They come out of the grave. He tells the blind to see and they see. He says, has there ever been a man like this? They were dumbfounded. He, what? How could Christ operate in such a level of authority and power? I'm going to tell you why. Because he was completely submitted to the will of the Father. It takes faith to submit to God. That's why Philippians chapter 2 is so amazing, where it says, Let this mind be in you that was in Christ, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbed to be equal with God. But he made himself of no reputation, and took upon himself the form of a servant, and be found in the fashion of a servant of a man. He humbled himself, listen, and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore, because of his obedience by faith, God also has highly exalted him and given him a name. <laughs> Above every name, that the name of Jesus, every knee should bow and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Why? Because he submitted himself even to the cross, despising the shame, sat down at the right hand of the Father because he looked for the joy of seeing many sons and daughters come into the kingdom. Give the Lord a hand clap and a shout. Come on, man. I'm telling you, faith, true biblical faith will take you into heaven. Heaven will come to earth through you. You can overcome the shyster. You can overcome the liar. I, I really am beginning to examine every part of my existence. The Bible says, let a man examine himself to make sure he's in a faith. And, and, and you know, the devil had kind of convinced me, well, you can't bring every thought under the authority of Christ. You, you, you really can't be filled with the fullness of God. You, you really can't overcome sin. You know, and I mean, I've always believed I could overcome major sins. You know, the sins that damn your soul, according to Galatians 5, because they that do such things shall not inherit eternal life. But I'm finding out I can, I can overcome. I can overcome. I can overcome all the lies of the devil. Are you there yet, Pastor Mike? Oh, no. <laughs> but as I get closer, you'll know it. I begin to operate in the same. Well, let's take a look at the authority. So much 
there's so much more. Um, well, let's just read a little bit further in John chapter 3. That which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Get that. That which is born of flesh is flesh. You know, in John chapter 1, verse 12, it says, For as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even as many that believe on his name, who were not born of the will of flesh or the will of, of blood or the will of man, but of the Father. We're born from above. Listen, marvel not, he said, you must be born of the Spirit. He said down here in verse 8, The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canest not tell whence it cometh and whether it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit, the Spirit of faith. Everyone who walks by faith, people can't figure them out. I just don't understand it. I mean, man, oh man, I just don't understand. Man, they get results. They get answered prayers. They, they're not moved by the problems. They're not falling apart. They're not... They're not in drugs. They're not in alcohol. They're not seeing psychiatrists. They, they're not using, they're, they're not, you know, they're just, they, they, you know, they're just living in this other world, you know. And darkness hates the light. Whew, whew. Isn't that amazing? Look at verse 15. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life. Um. Let, let's jump over here to Luke chapter 8, please. Backwards. But we're not going backwards. Luke chapter 8. In verse 22. Now it came to pass on a certain day that Jesus went into a ship with his disciples and said unto them, Let us go over unto the other side of the lake. And they launched forth. Now remember, they're following him. They're obeying him. They're submitting to him. See, I, I tell you what, you may not like this, but God is looking for yes men and women. That's what he's looking for, yes men. Yes, come on, if you have a natural business, and there is no corruptness in God, you understand. See, I'm not looking for people, I'm not looking for yes people for Mike Yeager, you know, because if I would tell you to do something wrong, you definitely should say it. And you'll have to be arrogant, I, I'm not doing that. Pastor, I'm sorry, my heart just won't let me do that. Fine. But, God's looking, see, God's never going to ask you to do something that's wrong. Contrary to his book, God is looking. Why would he, why, why would you look for yes people? Because you want to have somebody you can put up, bring up at your side. You, you want somebody, you really, you don't want somebody at your side who's argumentative with you. Every time you tell them to say, do something, they give you a long explanation why they should, why they couldn't, why they don't want to. I mean, who wants that? It drives you nuts. You, you don't want argumentative people around you. God don't want argumentative people. God wants people, to, if two be not agreed together, they cannot walk together. Matter of fact, why, why did God kick King Saul out? Why did King, and I was reading the other day that what finally God said, he literally says when he finally went to a peeper, when he finally went to an astrologist or a palm reader, he went to, a, he, the Bible said that was the last straw. It says God killed him because God said you will not seek out someone who's a, who's, who's a witch. And the Bible says God killed him. He said, you're, you're, you've been rebellious. He said, King Saul, he said, when you began, you were little in your eyes, but you got big and haughty. And pride goeth before fall, and the Holy Spirit before destruction. That's one, one reason this nation's coming down. So proudful and haughty. We're so proud. We're American. When we ought to be ashamed because we've murdered 50 million babies. And we're educating children into perverted sexual deeds in our schools. And the parents are sending their kids into those hell holes. I'm being honest. We ought to repent. But, see, you got to be born of the water and the spirit. It says, so they're in this boat, but as they sailed, he fell asleep. And there came down a storm of wind on the lake, and they were filled with water and were in jeopardy. I mean, it was really rough. I've been a sailor. I was out there in the Bering Sea, and I was in some bad, bad weather. And they came to him and awoke him, saying, Master, Master, we perish. Then he arose. Faith always arises to the occasion. And what does faith do? Having the same spirit of faith as it is written, we believe, therefore we have spoken. We also believe, and therefore we speak. You speak, you take authority. T 
Take authority over the sickness. Take authority over the disease. Take authority over the fear, the anxiety. God hasn't given us a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. Take authority over it. Put your foot down. I remember the time that Moses, they're, 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 they're right in front of us. They got the Red Sea and behind him they got the Egyptians. And Moses is freaking out. He's losing. He said, oh, God, oh, God. And basically God said, stop your blubbering. What's in your hand? He said, a rod. He said, use it. Stretch it out. Command the Red Sea to split. He said, I've given you the authority. It's amazing. You know what God said? I said, Lord, I know we're not walking where we need yet because behold, I give unto you authority to trample upon snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing, nothing, say nothing, shall by any means come to harm you. What does it say in Mark 16? He said, if you drink that of the dead thing, now you're not tempting God because you'll be dead. Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And I... I know people do it. I think they're, they're sincere, and so therefore most of them don't get bit. I've never, I won't do it, just picking up poisonous snakes. I mean, people have done that and didn't bite them because they were sincere in the heart. But, you know, Paul got bit by a viper, and it didn't affect him. Shook it off into the fire. Nothing, nothing. Ha, oh, I'm allergic to mold. Huh. I thought nothing will harm you. Oh, I can't get around black mold, Pastor Mike. Huh. I can't, I can't eat this, and I can't eat that. It'll kill me. Well, I'm not telling you. I mean, I know there are some people, there are certain things, they eat them, they're dead. But you know what? See, I used to be allergic to dust. I ended up in the hospital. My mom had to keep my bedroom so clean. My whole family had a lineage of lung problems. My, my, my sister, my mother died from it. My brother's on, on uh, those inhalants. I remember waking up in the hospital, barely breathing, <laughs> looking out the, through the plastic. <laughs> Couldn't hardly breathe. God healed me of my lungs. You know why? Because he took my sicknesses and he bore my infirmities. So the sickness and the infirmity trying to come on me has got to be a lie. It's got to belong to somebody else, and I'm not taking it. Faith says, I'm not putting up with this no more. Violent faith. Say violent faith. I'm not putting up with it. Now, I'm not saying you can just treat your physical body wrong and you eat wrong and do wrong. I think if you are doing wrong, you need to repent of it and start to do right and then believe God for healing. I broke my foot. It was my stupid fault, but God instantly healed it. Praise the Lord after I repented. <laughs> Y'all still here. So he rose up and rebuked the wind and they raging of the water and they seized and there was a calm and he said unto them, listen what Jesus said, the tenacity of Christ because he was faith in the flesh. See, they were on belief in the flesh. He was faith in the flesh. You know, faith, you know what faith in the flesh is? Your will and not mine. I'm here to do your will. I must be about my father's business. I have meat that you know not out of. So he arose and he rebuked. He said, where is your faith? Have you ever said, where's your brains? What would you do with your common sense? What were you thinking? He didn't say that. He didn't say, where's your brains? Where's your common sense? What were you thinking? He said, where is your faith? Why didn't you rise up? Why would you disturb my sleep? You guys could have dealt with this. Huh? You, he said, listen, man, what do you think I've come here for? I've come here to teach you how to walk by faith. I've come here to teach you how to live in faith. I've come here, I've given you authority. I've given you authority over the natural, the physical, and the spiritual. I've given you authority over nature. Of course, you don't misuse it. You don't use it according to every little whim and wham you want. You've got to be led of the Holy Ghost. Jesus did not raise everybody from the dead. He only raised people from the dead the Lord told him to. We think we can raise everybody from the dead. Jesus did. Well, if Jesus didn't, how do you think you're going to? You've got to hear from the Father. See, faith goes to the Father and says, Father, what's your will? The Father, Lazarus died. Or Lazarus was sick. But he, he, he prayed about everything. That's why it says, pray without ceasing. Father, what do you want me? I'm always having, having people, well, Pastor Mike, believe God for this, believe God for that, believe. And I don't say nothing. I'm thinking, well, why don't you? If the Father told me to, I would. 
I've had people, the people said this to me. Pastor Mike, why don't you just believe that there'll be heat in this building 24-7, praise God, and we don't need a wood stove or nothing else. I'm like, hey, that's awesome. If God tells me to do it, I'll do it. Maybe I'm just not where I need to be at. I'm thinking, why don't you do it? <laughs> See, that's not faith. You got to hear from heaven. Faith is built on the word of God, the will of God, the, the quickened will of God. That's what it is. Faith is in God, and it can only be operated by God, through God, in us as we hear his voice. You know, there was times when God said, he said to the disciples, go stand down by the temple. They had just been arrested, and then God supernaturally released him. He said, you guys go down there and stand in the temple and say, <clears throat> this is the words of life. They didn't do that every time, but they did it that morning. And he said, hey, those guys you threw in prison, we found them. Where are they? Well, they're down there at the temple preaching. Well, why'd they go down there? The Holy Spirit said go. Read how many times in the book of Acts it says, and the Holy Ghost said, and the Holy Ghost said, and the Holy Ghost said. You got to hear from heaven. Tell somebody, you got to hear from heaven to operate in the authority of heaven. So he said, where is your faith? They being afraid, saying, oh, one to another, what manner of man is this? For he commandeth even the winds and waters, they obey him. And notice in verse 26, and they arrived at the country of the Gadareans, which is over against Galilee. If you say that, it means they were transported, man. They're out there in the middle of the water, man. They're, they're, they, they've been rowing against the winds. They're out there. Jesus stands up. <clears throat> Shut up. Be quiet. Where's your faith? And they were there at the shore. <laughs> I like that, man. Boom. They were there at the shore. Then, of course, there was a devil. There was demons in the Gadareans. And he commanded the demons to come out. See, God didn't mess with the devils. He just took authority over them. Look there in uh, Luke chapter 11. So much more. Jesus is casting out devils in verse 14. He has authority. See, submit yourself to God. Resist the devil, and he'll flee from you. You know what? You can't have authority over demons if you don't submit to the one who is the authority. Uh, it, it says that in Luke 8, where the centurion, he says, Master, come and uh, my servant will be healed. And so he's coming, and he must have had a revelation during that time. He said, wait a minute, I'm not even worthy for him to come under my roof. I, he had a revelation. This has got to be the king of kings and the Lord of lords. So he sent his servants back and said, listen, Master, I'm not worthy for you to come in my house. If you speak the word only, my servant will be healed. He said, and the reason why I'm saying this is because I'm a man under authority. And I say to one, go and he goes. Now, when you're under authority, you don't misuse that authority. We got a lot of people misusing the authority today. We got a president, and I'm not picking on him. He is abusing his authority. He, is, he, he ain't got the authority. He's taking it. He's a thief. No, I'm not picking on him. He's a thief. Anytime you take more authority than what the, 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 the foundation that was laid, you are a thief. Our Congress and Senate, congressmen and senators are thieves. I'm not picking on them. They're passing lies. They exempt themselves from. They're thieves. You know where thieves go. They ain't going to go to heaven. They got to repent for stealing. And then they got to make restitution. See, don't think you can go out here tonight and rob a bank, say, oh, God, forgive me, forgive me, and not return the money. <laughs> oh, no. No. See, they're deceived, aren't they? He says, look, so he's casting out dumb demons, and they come out in a dumb spake, and the people wondered, and verse 15, and some said, oh, he's casting out devils to be as above the chief of the devils, and, you know, the shyster, you know, the, you know, the prince of the dung heap, and others tempting him, sought him a sign from heaven, but he, knowing their thoughts, said unto them, every kingdom divided against itself, is brought to death, desolation. In verse 18, if Satan also be divided against himself, how shall the kingdom of God stand? And to just going down here, it says, verse 20, but if I with the finger of God, I, I, read, I, read, I read another translation with the little finger. You know how much it took God to take care of the king and the shyster? Little finger. Hold your little finger up. Listen, listen. But if I with the little finger of God cast out devils no doubt the kingdom of God has come upon you can I tell you something when I'm really operating in true biblical faith under the authority of Christ in obedience 
it is not difficult to get miracles. It is not. There's been times I've seen miracles so quick and so easy it frightened me. I thought, wow, that was, that was easy. Um, it, it, it takes less faith in other countries to get results than here because I think the demons here are more sophisticated. We've convinced ourselves. We've fortified science falsely so-called. We just don't understand how the body works. You just don't understand. See, people in them nations, they, they've not really been educated to a great extent. And so when you tell them, you said, hey, I'm going to lay my hands on you. Spirit of God's going to come on you. And that cancer is going to come out. Oh, okay. I'm going to pray. The minute I pray, you, you, you jump up out of that wheelchair because God's going to, oh, okay. They just act on it. They Simple faith. But they cooperate. Americans don't cooperate. You pray for them and they go, well, move, okay, move, move your foot now. You know, the foot that was broken. Move your foot. Move your foot. They won't cooperate. I mean, unbelief is so deep in them. Okay, well, Spirit of the Lord, quick in my heart, said if you'll run around this, if you'll just run back and forth, the healing would be manifested. And they look at you like you've lost your mind. I ain't running nowhere. I'm not running. See, the spirit of rebellion. I'm not running. Naaman, go, go, go dip seven times in her dirty, filthy Jordan. I'm not going. Well, if he'd asked you to do some kind of majestic, wouldn't you? Oh, yeah. Okay. Seventh time he was cleansed. Five times I slammed my broken foot down as hard as I could. And the fifth time, the power of God hit it, and I was instantly healed. <laughs> Can you say amen? amen? He said, when a stronger man armed keepeth his palace, his goods are in peace. But when a stronger than he shall come upon him and overcome him, he taketh from him all of his armor, wherein he trusteth, and divided his spoil. See, the greater one has come. His name is Jesus. He overcame principalities and powers and made or showed them openly, triumphing over them in it. That was in verse 23. Uh, Notice, he that is not with me is against me, and he that gathereth not with me scattereth. In other words, you, you got to decide, are you with God? Who are you going to believe? And he says that once you cast the devil out of a person, you know, I don't, I don't cast, even when I go to other countries, I don't cast devils out of people real quick. Because it says when you cast the devil out, it will come back with seven worse. If that person doesn't set their heart in agreement with God, there's a lot of people. Do you know I have prayed for people and God healed them? I mean, healed them. And the sickness came back worse. You know why? They did not set their heart to seek God. I'll give you an example. The, the, the man at the pool says, though, right? He goes, walks in, all of these crippled and lame and blind. Why didn't he hear them, heal them, Lord, Pastor Mike? They, they, they wouldn't come to Jesus. Now, this man couldn't get to Jesus. He's laying there. He says, oh, Lord, every time the pool is stirred, you know, some people say, it is, and an angel stirred the water, and some people get into all kind of philosophies and satanic rubbish. I just take the word for what it says. It says an angel would stir the water a certain season, and whoever got into the water first got healed. That's what it says. So he says, nobody, nobody would bring me into the pool. He looks at him, he says, be healed, take up your cot, and go home. Well, the man, he responded. We, we've got a society that just won't respond. People won't respond. But he responded. He got healed. Poof. He's carrying his cot. Well, this is what Jesus said to him. He said, well, I think it was later on. He's, was it then or was it later on he went and the Pharisees saw him carrying the cot and said, what are you doing? It's the Sabbath day. And, and he said, oh, there was this man who said this to him. And, oh, and later on Jesus goes and finds the man and he says this. He said, sin opened the door for your sickness the first time. 
He said, don't you do it again, lest a worse thing have come upon you. Man, see, this spirit of disobedience, we are propagating a gospel of disobedience. It's demonic. We are telling people, you, now that you're born again, now that you're washed in the blood, now that you've accepted Jesus, it's all a free gift of salvation. You can live any way you want, and yet the, ten, the commandments are still there. Which commandment are we allowed to break? Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not murder. Thou shalt have no other gods before you. No, those commandments are still real. The Levitical laws are gone, but not the commandments of Christ. Actually, did you know he told, go and teach men everywhere to obey all the commandments I gave you. That's the last thing Jesus said to his disciples. Go and teach men everywhere to obey all the things I've commanded you. He commanded a whole heap. Turn the cheek when someone slaps you. Do good to them that do you evil. Forgive. Love one another. Those commandments aren't gone, but faith gives me the ability to take the grace to obey God's will. Whew. The king and the shyster. You know what he said? He said that when his, his disciples came back, they were so excited in Luke 10, I think it was, they, and verse 19 and on. They said, oh, Lord, even the demons are subject unto us in that name. Oh, he said, this is wonderful. And he said, uh, he said, don't rejoice because you have authority over demons, but rejoice, rejoice rather that your names are written down in heaven. And then he said this, I beheld Satan fall as lightning from the heavens. What do you mean? He meant man no longer had to be a slave of sickness and disease, fear and anxiety, lust and sin. For this purpose was the Son of God manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap and a shout. Praise the Lord, whom the Son sets free is free indeed. If you want to be free, the truth will set you free, but you got to get the truth inside of you. Get the truth inside of you. Get, have, you ever, have you ever heard something that was a lie, but you just kept saying it for some who knows what reason, and to where eventually you believe the lie? Huh? Have you ever heard somebody distort the truth? They knew they were distorting it, but they kept on and kept on and kept on, and after 10, 15, 20 years, they convinced themselves all along they were right. But you know it wasn't true. Have you ever had somebody accuse you of things, and, you, and, and, and it's not not being a rocket scientist. You, you, what they're saying is this completely off the wall, and you say, wait a minute, that's not what I said. There's people there. That's not what I did. That's, and you might as well just shut up because they're an underneath delusion. They're deceived. Well, we're all deceived. We've been deceived by the devil too long. We're going to tear his kingdom down. We're, king, we're tearing down a lie that you cannot overcome sin. We're tearing down a lie that you cannot live holy. We're tearing down a lie that works are not important. Oh, no, faith always produces works because faith without works is dead. Amen, amen, amen. I'm so happy I could do a backflip, but I better not. <laughs> I can't. Well, I shouldn't say I can't. Well, if, they, if it was the will of God, I, could, I can turn around. Isn't God good? Now, if you believe you can do a backflip, come up and show us. We'll go for it. <laughs> Amen. I, I can say if you need prayer, come up tonight, but we all need prayer. But if you'd like to have prayer, I um, <clears throat> we're, we're moving into a deeper realm of authority. Say, I am moving into a deeper realm of authority because I am moving into the realm of faith that produces obedience to the Lordship of Christ.